حضرت مارو مارو یو ما ما فرق جهه کومندان خطا کی نینه چې د خوښ نه کوه روغ لا کړه لې کی نینه چې دونو سو وکړه وکړه ورسه وشتم وشتم کړه لې کی کوه تم شکست و پاس ورک چې دا دې کو حکومت خبر شو ورس خبر شو کړه لې کی کوه یې د کندور نه د پنشیر نه د کارغن نه داوا تم کوه ټول د کندار نه در سروړه سوار لاس پر کی په مخ سروړه سوار لاس پر کی چې په مخ نه روړه کړه لې کی بنوم سره وکړه وکړه دیار لاش په جانګم سره وکړه دوره کو واش نه روګه را کړه دوره کو دای کې مې کومک ور ته روغه کو دای کې بنوم په وکړه په وکړه د خلکې د پرچمې د شوروي کو وم بیرته واپس وو د خوس په زور نه نه یستا درې سوه نه را شوروون ته خیلی عسکر وطنی عسکر د کارمل عسکر دا مر دول کړه درې سوه نه را دوی مر دول کړه کو دای کې شپږ سوه نه را په لکت ورسو For seven years now, Commander Khatak has been fighting the Soviet and Kabul government forces. He swears he will not lay down his arms until the communists surrender. Moscow has stated it will not withdraw some 140,000 troops from Afghan soil until the Mujahideen surrender. Meanwhile, as the Afghan war steadily intensifies, Soviet might is slowly but surely pounding much of rural Afghanistan into rubble. seven years, mounting pressure on the defiant countryside has forced up to five million people, or one-third of the pre-war population, to pack what belongings they can carry and make the journey to the security of refugee camps in neighboring Pakistan and Iran. of civilians continues, the same mountain trails across Afghanistan's rugged borders have carried a very different traffic moving in the opposite direction. Resistance convoys carrying arms and ammunition make their way from staging points on the border to fuel the war in provinces the length and breadth of the country.
Soviet efforts to seal the borderline have made an already arduous journey even more difficult. Mountain passes between Afghanistan and Pakistan have been seeded with mines, and over the past two years, experienced Soviet commandos have staged ambushes along the trails used by the resistance. In addition, the depopulation of the countryside has meant that food for both men and animals has become scarce. Probably the longest and most treacherous trail of all is that across the towering ranges of the Hindu Kush. Setting out from sanctuaries in northern Pakistan, the Mujahideen cross a series of passes at around 16,000 feet and may take up to three weeks to reach the Panjshir Valley, gateway to northern Afghanistan. For the first half of the journey, the sheer difficulty of the terrain and shortage of food poses far greater problems than the enemy. Burdened with ammunition, mines, mortars and machine guns, many of the horses that set out never reached their destination. Broken legs and sheer exhaustion exact a steady toll. As the convoy nears the Panjshir Valley, the threat of airstrikes by Soviet jets based only minutes flying time away near the capital, Kabul, becomes ever more real. To avoid being caught on exposed mountain passes, the Mujahideen are forced to move under cover of darkness. journey is the Panjshir, a narrow 75 mile long valley strategically situated close to both Kabul and the main highway north to the Soviet Union. Resistance in the Panjshir has emerged as perhaps the most effective in the country. In large measure this has been due to the valley's commander Ahmad Shah Massoud. Since the Soviet invasion of Christmas 1979 Masood, a 33-year-old former engineering student, has established himself as one of the most popular guerrilla chiefs in Afghanistan, a figure whose reputation has spread far beyond the valley itself. Masood's fears proved to be well-founded. In 1978, pro-Soviet army officers staged a bloody coup in which President Daoud was killed. The new Marxist regime embarked on a program of force-fed reform that triggered widespread revolt in the conservative and deeply religious countryside. In 1979, the Soviet Union intervened and Soviet troops crossed the border. But it was too late to prevent a popular resistance from becoming a full-blown war of national liberation. Masood's 
مبارزه خود شدید تر بسازیم و فعالیت خود از دروس ها تون تر بسازیم تا خدا بخواهد که افغانستان دوباره آزاد بسازیم او رقم هم بدرد نمی خوری نه 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 despite his relative youth Masood's authority in the Panjshir stands unchallenged at the same time his relationship with both his men and the people of the valley has remained informal almost casual در کوه نشاره نه نه نشاره جاو بخوره نمی شاره چقدر جاو می دیش؟ ما سه ما تار میکنیم در تشت همین ولی بگه دیسی جاو ترکه ایمانده تار میکنیم پومی باز امور بخش میده خوب تا میکنه میکنه استاد میباشد سه چار اگنه در آتر هم و در کتن هم آل ما چه قبط اینش میشه شما بخش اگنه 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 ا The organization that Masood has built up in the valley is somewhere in the region of 7,000 men, a far larger force than the typical Afghan resistance commander might wield. <laughs> A senior assistant to Masood offered reasons for the success of the Panjshir resistance. First of all, of course, help of God. Secondly, as I see it, which differs from other parts of Afghanistan, is an effective guerrilla order. Secondly, unity inside the valley. Right amongst all the bases mm -hmm. in relation to commander himself. Thirdly, which is more important, is an effective and efficient leadership, right. which has got very good plans in mind, on paper, and practice. How much of this is a question of Panjshir and how much Masood the man? Both Panjshir and Masood. Leadership is very important in a guerrilla warfare. He has become and proved to be a charismatic guerrilla leader of Afghans inside Afghanistan. Masood has organized a small number of Panjshiri guerrillas, probably around 500, into elite mobile companies. Better trained and better armed than their village-based comrades, these units travel beyond the valley, striking at Soviet bases and lines of communication. Repeatedly hit by Panjshiri guerrillas has been the Salang Highway, a vital communications link between the capital, Kabul, and the Soviet Union. But if the Panjshiri guerrillas have succeeded in hurting the Russians and the Moscow-backed regime in Kabul, there has been a heavy price to be paid. Soviet offensives against the valley have increased in intensity and destructiveness, laying waste the lower reaches of the main valley. And as so often in the Afghan war, it has been the civilians who have suffered first, and suffered most. Panjshir was once home to some 90,000 people. Now it is all but deserted. 
but the Mujahideen stayed, hiding in the mountains and side valleys, an existence not too difficult for a people already inured to hardship. <laughs> And in the high villages above the valley, the guerrillas maintained agricultural production using methods that had changed little in centuries. In the Panchia, as elsewhere in Afghanistan, Islam has played a basic role as a In the Panchia, as elsewhere in Afghanistan, Islam has played a basic role as a motivating force behind the resistance. Allah. A devout Muslim who, along with his men, prays five times a day, Masood was involved in the Islamic revivalist movement from his student days at Kabul Polytechnic. Despite the unifying force of Islam, this is still a country divided by chronic ethnic and political differences, and Masood is unusual in having forged an impressive degree of political cohesion within the Panjshir and adjacent regions. For much of Afghanistan, unity has remained an elusive factor. Today, Masood's loyalties are to one of the leading Afghan fundamentalist parties based in Pakistan, the Jamiat Islami. Jamiat is strongest in the north of Afghanistan, finding most of its support amongst the Tajik people of the northeast, the Uzbeks and Turkmen of the north, and the Farsiwan in the west. In the south of Afghanistan, there is also a kaleidoscope of Afghan resistance parties the strongest of which is the fundamentalist Hezb islami Most of Hezb's strength is drawn from the Pashtun people of the south and southeast. In the south, as in the north, most commanders pay at least lip service to the importance of unity in their holy war. But, like most commanders, Hazarat is quick to stress the leading role of his own party, Hezb. With some 150 men under his command, Hazrat is far more typical of the average Afghan guerrilla commander than the Panjshir's Masood. 
in the rigidly tribal environment of Pashtun Paktia, tribal allegiances remain paramount. The various guerrilla groups, including Hazrat and his men, show little inclination to move outside their own area, and most operations are close to home. Traditions of tribal democracy can also complicate the process of effective command. Most decisions are arrived at after vociferous debate and consensus of opinion. <laughs> can you ask the commander if the helicopters come here very often? Have they done much damage to this area? For the most part, despite Soviet air power, Hazrat Mujahideen move freely across the hills to attack targets at distances of up to five hours walk from their bases. The group leaves a base near the Pakistan border for an attack on an Afghan army position on the plains of Jaji. Mujahideen move freely across the hills to attack targets at distances of up to five hours walk from their bases. The group leaves a base near the Pakistan border for an attack on an Afghan army position on the plains of Jaji. Thank <laughs> you. 
رشوت مزاید دشمن کون لگی دشمن The Mujahideen regroup at already well used positions on a mountain ridge Below, some four kilometers away, lies the town and the enemy position. Uja non. Kures. Uja mazayal. Ene filak. Uja non. No. Non. Mandum bishwar. The level of sophistication of the Mujahideen arsenal leaves a lot to be desired, not least when set against the massive firepower and technological advantage of their superpower enemy. The Chinese ground-to-ground -ground missiles are a relatively new addition to the guerrilla arsenal, which until recently was limited to rifles, mortars, machine guns, and what could be captured from the Soviets. But with launching methods as primitive as these, accuracy is as much a matter of luck as anything else. Even with their range of eight kilometers, which allows the Mujahideen to make standoff attacks, the chance of scoring a direct hit on just about any target is remote. Fire. <laughs> An Afghan Air Force Mi-8 attack helicopter arrives. This close to the border, it is almost certainly crewed by Russians. So often the way, the Mi-8 stays well out of range of Akbar Ali's machine gun.
Finally, rather than confronting the Mujahideen, the helicopter strikes the easiest target available, a nearby village. By now, the enemy's artillery fire was sustained and occasionally uncomfortably accurate. <laughs> I wonder can you get me through the customs? <laughs> Hazarat's men will make pinprick attacks on their enemy, often from a distance which can hardly hope to make any real impact on the course of the war. But if nothing else, these attacks do serve to keep the communist forces living forever with a wary eye towards the hills. روسا از نقطه نظر اصله ها با گذاشت هر سال سلاحی خود تغییر داده رفتن در اوائل وقتی که داخل افغانستان شدن سلاحی بسیار سنگین با خود آورده بودن که در جنگ های چریکی و مناطق کوهستانی چندان به دردکور نبود مگر بعدتر استفاده از الیکوپترا و سلاحی سبکتر بیشترتر ساختن و فعلا با گذشت هر سال در سلاح خود یک نواوری میکنن و سلاح بهترتر داخل افغانستان میکنن تکتیک روس هم با گذشت هر سال از نظر ما بهترتر شده رفتن و نسبت به گذشت روس ها فعلا متحرکتر هستن 
مگر از نقطه نظر روسیه روحیه برخلاف تا جایی که من تجربه دارم با گذشته هر سال چون روسا در افغانستان خیلی ساکرش تلفات داده روحی از ساکر روسی پایین آمده رفته و فعلا خصوصا در جنگ آخری که ما دیدیم این که فقط یکی دو ماه پیشتر جنگ دوام گذشت از ساکر روسی چندان مورال روحی نداشتن Occasionally, well-trained and determined Mujahideen units have succeeded in capturing major communist positions. In mid-1985, the Afghan army garrison of Pushgur in the Panjshir Valley fell to Ahmad Shah Massoud's forces. The base was captured with the surrender of over 400 Afghan soldiers, the death of a major general, and the loss of huge quantities of arms and equipment. The siege of Pushgur began in late autumn of the year before, 1984. <laughs> Commander, can you explain briefly the strategy of this operation? Plan of the Rajab of Pushgur is that when Pushgur is the last post of the government in the Panjshir, as a result of the attack, the first post of the government will be taken. پلان در قسمت ای که اول با تمام راه اکمالاتی زمینی و هوای زیر قطع کنی بعد از که راه اکمالاتی زمینی و هوایش قطع شد و وقت حمله سر پوست های محافظوی کشت محافظوی که حتی در اطراف مرکز پشور ترتیب شده و باید گرفته شد یکی پشت دیگر با با وقتی که گرفته میشن آتش سلای سقیل از بالا پوین شده میره تا خود در سر مرکز برسن انشالله پشور فتح خواهد شد Masood's opening moves against the enemy positions were delayed by the first heavy snowfall of winter, which at 15,000 feet comes early. Shia's Mujahideen, with most villages deserted and communist forces dug in along much of the lower valley, surviving the intense cold of high altitudes is an annual undertaking. <laughs> The opening shots for the mountain outposts around Pushgur come in the early evening of October the 9th, 1984. Go, 
بچای شمشیر بچای شمشیر یک مایل فرونده بچای شمشیر یک مایل فشینگی را یک یک تار مایل فشینگی یک تار مایل انفجاری را فرونده ما توفیق خداوند شهید باشید مینا میلادی کرد پیش بر میلادی کرد توپچی بالبخ زیر پای است توپچی نفر نفر جای کلم من نفر نرسید توپچی از ما سه سال مدت دور است افراش مشتو بکنه As five guerrillas crawled through the minefield surrounding the besieged outpost, mortars and recoilless rifles began a barrage of covering fire. Then, as the light faded, the accuracy of the supporting recoilless rifle began to suffer. Despite supporting fire from the main base on the valley floor, the outpost was finally overrun late that night with the loss of two Mujahideen killed as they advanced through the mines. Captured Afghan army conscripts were later released by the guerrillas. Their officers, suspected with some justification of... The opening shots for the mountain outposts around Pushkur come in the early evening of October the 9th, 1984. بچای شمشیر بچای شمشیر یک مایل فرونده بچای شمشیر یک مایل فشینگی را یک یک تار مایل فشینگی را یک تار مایل انفجاری را فرونده ما توفیق خداوند شهید باشید میران توپچی بالبخ زیر پای است توپچی نفر نفر جای کلم من نفر نرسید توپچی از ما سه سال مدت دور است افراش ما چطور بکنیم As five guerrillas crawled through the minefield surrounding the besieged outpost, mortars and recoilless rifles began a barrage of covering fire. Then, as the light faded, the accuracy of the supporting recoilless rifle began to suffer. Despite supporting fire from the main base on the valley floor, the outpost was finally overrun late that night with the loss of two Mujahideen killed as they advanced through the mines. Captured Afghan army conscripts were later released by the guerrillas.
Their officers, suspected with some justification of communist sympathies, faced interrogation next morning. He says they might kill four of them. Another attack on a distant enemy position which Commander Hazrat has no real expectation of capturing. شما خودتون خود میفهمید که خداوند متعال به انسان خیلی یک قیمت والای داده بیه، شما را به جای مصرف کردین فهمیدین یا نه؟ With a captured radio transmitter, Commander Hazrat intercepts the wavelength used by the Afghan troops in the post his men are attacking. Colin, how's that guy up there? What? How's that guy up there? I think he's dead. I know that or he's a head wound, but you can't tell. This guy's got a head wound too. That's okay. Jesus, that was so close. Cool. Oh, 
پرون روز چه زموگ دو کهرمان مجهدین در شهادت لول مکام تا برسدل او تو تنا مجهدین زخمیان شول موکتا یو زخمی در دیر و پیسو و در دیر اصلاونا بهتر دی زموگ پاغا بانده داس زلخ و گیگی لکا د انسان د وجود و آزا یو لاس یو فخی چه کتکی اما د خدای در آزا بخاطر پزرها و مجهدین مو د اسلام په نامن قربان کړی دی او د خپل شهدا او زخمیان او زندانیان او لار تعقیب کو موږ به تر هغه وخت پورې خپل وصل په ځمکه کې نغدو تر تو پورم چې په افغانستان کې اسلامي حکومت قائم کړی نه وي او د قران قانون محکم ګرځولې نه وي و من الله توفیق چې شکیه خو قوم در <laughs> 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 Thank you. 